What I've been talking to you about so far is about how generative and specialized AI affects the existing set of automations you've been thinking about. But what I want to do now is actually help you co-create with you and understand what the future is going to look like. What are the new scenarios that generative AI and specialized AI will unlock? And we believe that with you, our customers, we've been on this journey together to have world-class computer vision, to have the best specialized document understanding models. It's only with your guidance that we've been able to do that. So, I have a challenge for you as we go into the future. And I have some questions that I'd like to answer here together with you. And those questions are about what comes next. What if every employee in your organization could be a developer? What if creating tests was just as easy as going down the hallway and picking up that Red Bull? What if every user could be a power user? And what if there was something that was eh, a little better than a co-pilot, but for automation? Well, we believe there's an answer to these questions. I'm proud to introduce you to the newest member of the UiPath family, UiPath Autopilot. Or as I like to call it, auto. <laughs> UiPath Autopilot is an amazing set of capabilities, and it's going to help improve the lives of developers and testers and analysts. Everyone from the intern to the CEO will be able to make use of Autopilot and the capabilities that it brings to the UiPath automation platform and do things that never before were possible. And to show you some of this, let's start with the developers and what we're doing in UiPath Studio for workflows and apps and expressions. So I'd like to welcome to the stage Nupur Anani to show you something we used to call Project Wingman. Nupur. Thanks for that warm welcome, Graham. Of course. I am so excited to show Autopilot in action today. Now, for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to be playing a persona. I'll be the Partnerships Director at Desk Experience. So as the Partnerships Director, I'm frequently onboarding new vendors into our different systems. They usually fill out this information on a paper form. It's a vendor information form. And then I enter that data into Salesforce and NetSuite before I eventually tell my team on Slack. <laughs> it takes me about four to five minutes. Now, in that same amount of time, Autopilot is going to help me generate an automation for the end-to-end -end process. We'll start with digitizing the form. Now, Autopilot for apps supports the generation of apps based off of screenshots of legacy systems, text prompts, and PDFs like this one that we just saw using UiPath document understanding. Autopilot is also going to help me by generating some entities and data service to help me store those submissions and the data from them. Now, we can see that the form has generated, and we can see the submission for the data entity in data service. But to truly transform this business process, I want to connect this to an automation. So I'm going to ask Autopilot to help me generate an automation. I might ask it to generate a description with OpenAI, create that new account in Salesforce, and notify my team even for me on Slack. So what's happening behind the scenes here, Nipper? So here, Autopilot for Studio is using a combination of our connections to Salesforce and Slack from integration service and activities from Studio to generate the automation workflow. Once it's generated, I'm going to have the opportunity to review the workflow and even change the prompt if I'd like. Now, Studio Web is already making automating for developers very easy, but Autopilot is truly making it faster and easier than ever. That's amazing. Oh, there it is. 
So now that I've got this workflow, let's move it into Studio here. As I move it into Studio, I'm going to see my activities populate, pre-configured with those exact connections we talked about. But I forgot one piece of the process. I usually onboard the vendor into NetSuite before I send that message in Slack. So let's use UI automation to do this. I'll go ahead and add that use browser activity for UI automation. And then generally the next step is to indicate exactly where I want activities for that UI automation, whether it's selectors or whatnot. So I'll provide the tab as well. And this is particularly helpful, right, because I take quite a bit of time usually to identify those activities and selectors to interact with. I'll try again here. And then I'll actually provide autopilot with that prompt. So okay. it's as simple as telling it exactly what I do, which is add a new vendor. Once I click generate activities, it's going to go over and start to look at the different pieces of this automation to really identify where to interact. Where are you doing this, or is it doing it by itself? Well, Autopilot's doing it for me. So not only is Autopilot identifying the activities and selectors for me, but it's using UiPath best practices to do this. Now, this is particularly important for me because I want to make sure that these selectors are robust enough that they can withstand any of the different changes in that application. I remember that taking me a long time when I first did it. Exactly. So we can see that Autopilot found those activities for me, and we can see that it has going to basically take those activities, all those selectors, put them back into Studio for me. Now there's one last piece to this, and kind of a finishing touch for this flow. Usually what I like to do is really make sure that all of the web addresses that my vendors input are secure, just so that we don't have any issues going into NetSuite as we onboard this information. To make sure that the automation can account for this, I'm going to create an argument. I'll call it web address. And then usually I would find myself on Google or Stack Overflow to figure out what the expression looks like. But I'm actually going to ask Autopilot to generate it for me. So it's going to be as simple as make sure that that web address argument has HTTPS. I remember taking so much time with my big O'Reilly book sitting next to me doing this. Exactly. Especially for those of us that are new with automation and potentially new with programming, creating expressions can be really overwhelming. Right. So to be able to do this with just a click and a type is really helpful. Wow. Now, in the time that it took me to onboard one manual vendor, I was able to create an automation for the end-to-end -end process and really free myself from ever having to do this data entry manually again. It's really AI at work. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Nooper. Thank you. All right, Ingo, I think we know what's up next. <laughs> Show us the new stuff and test. Thank you so much, Graham. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not just playing a software tester right now, I am a software tester. And Graham, we know it, and every other tester knows it. The time needed for testing is always infinitely larger than the time available. On top of that, too many repetitive manual testing tasks typically slow us down, allowing those yeah, critical bugs to slip through mm -hmm. and hurting the software we release. So let's now see how Autopilot helps to fix that issue. Let's do it. Now, to do that, let me go to one of my testing projects here in uh, Test Manager. And as you can see, this project is all about a web application. And for this web application over here, we see that we already defined yeah, several requirements for this application. Now, going to one of these requirements, we see that this requirement over here is expressed as a user story, contains information about the user flow, the application logic, and it also contains information about the acceptance criteria as defined by the product manager. Now, to generate now tests for this particular requirement, all you need to do is click on this button over here, generate tests, and what Autopilot then does in the background, it analyzes the logic of that requirement, analyzing the relation between all these acceptance criteria, and once done, Autopilot will notify you like this to then yeah, 
show you all the critically at the top test cases Autopilot has found for that particular requirement. So these are displayed over here. Now, you won't be 100% satisfied with what Autopilot suggests all the time, so that means you can also add your instructions over here to yeah, make Autopilot generate the test cases that are specifically tailored to your needs. Now, once you're done with that, you just select the test cases you want to create, click on Create over here, and then those test cases you just generated are being linked to the requirement. Now, going to one of these manual test cases we just generated, we see that we don't just generate the name of the test case, we also generate step-by-step -step manual yeah, instructions that allow you to immediately execute that manual test case. But the story doesn't end there. You know it, Graham, we are UiPath, we live and breathe automation, so the next step is pretty clear. We want to automate those manual test cases. So to do that, uh, let me switch to Studio. And this project here in Studio is linked to the project you have just seen in Test Manager. Now, whenever we do that, we immediately show you all the manual test cases we can find in this project here in Studio. So you can think of it as a to-do list for your test automation developer. Now, to automate one of these manual test cases, let's first of all load uh, one of these manual test cases here in Studio. And when we do that, we convert all the manual test steps we just generated in Test Manager here to code comments, as you can see. Now, what you just see are our brand new coded automation capabilities that allow developers to write any type of automation in C Sharp here in Studio. Perfect. Now, with the object repository containing yeah, all the elements, of the application you are testing, your buttons, your links, your tables, you basically have everything you need in order to turn this yeah, pile of text into an actual automation. How do you do that? Well, you just select uh, the text comments over here and click on Generate Code. Wow. So what's happening here, Ingo, behind the scenes? So what Autopilot does now behind the scenes, it, uh, analyzes all the manual test steps, it builds a cohesive story from all these manual test steps, it cross-checks with the object repository to figure out are there technical elements that can be used for the automation, and of course, Autopilot constantly interacts also with our driver framework to build the actual automation. And Graham, here, here it is. Go. The magic just happened, so <laughs> to say, right? Now, the best part of it, you can also customize the automation according to your needs. So this is just a suggestion Autopilot does. So now let's do the final proof and let's also see if we can execute this automated test case. So Studio now compiles the project, makes this automated test case ready for execution, and here you go, the automated test case just kicked off. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's the short story of how you can not only generate manual test cases from requirements, but also automate those manual test cases in just a matter of minutes with Autopilot. That's all I have. Thanks so much. Amazing. Thank you.